there. This is my new friend, my model. I was just using him to focus. I'm in Ilmitz by Viliotitz at his uh, wine yard, wine goods. And we're going to shoot some environmental portraits today for a change for me. We'll be using some strobes. I have three of those strobes from Canon and uh, remote the wireless trigger for them. But mainly I want to use the ambient light. So I will be using really the flash to sort of fill in the shadows to give some nice light on the face of people in the kitchen or people eating or drinking here wine. But in principle I want to capture as much ambient light uh, in the atmosphere as possible. So. As I said, I will be using three of those, but to diffuse the light, I'm going to use and position it in different locations. Uh, this tri-flip from last to light. This is a really useful tool when you want to simply either reflect the light, bounce it, or uh, even you can uh, shoot through. Ian, you want to say hello to people? Huh? Do you want to say hello to people? Hello to yeah, but you have to come here. No. People? <laughs> people who would be watching it later. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I'm not a movie star. I'm not so good like you. I'm just I'm still picturing it so often. <laughs> okay, I think it will be a heavy one to shoot Ian later on. So talking about the tri-flip, this thing is really useful. It's not that expensive. You, there is a whole bracket which you actually mounted on a, on a stand. And then here you can position the, you can, you can um, mount the flash and basically you, you flash it, you fire it onto this uh, reflective surface and it bounces back. Very portable, very useful for such uh, environmental shots. So you don't have to really build up the whole studio and it works. I tried it multiple of times. So let me do some setup and uh, we'll see how it goes. So this is the tri-flip. It has different covers. This is just a translucent, semi-reflective, and uh, it just gives you nice white bouncing light. Uh, it does come, the whole set comes with, uh, I think, five different ones. So you can put this on top of it, the cover, like a golden, silver, black, completely white, etc. So basically what I will do, I will have this roughly in about 45 degree degrees angle. Okay, let's get the model here. Come on, stand. Let me move the bag. So that's the basic idea. Let's raise it. Before I switch on the flash, let me get the reading of the ambient. So the flash is that the trigger is off. So I want to use, let's start with the 2.8. Uh, to get some ambient light, I want I want to have sort of slower shutter speed, so the flash duration, I mean theoretically I could go to 250th of a second or 200th, 200th of a second, but this would kill the ambience. So what I want to do, I want to go slower, let's say 100th of a second, and I have to increase the ISO. So I'm just taking a reading of the, his face. So 400 ISO, let's go 800 ISO, 
hundredths of a second. I want so I'm slightly like two thirds underexposed. And it's good. I'm getting the ambience. One hundredths of a second, 2.8, and I'm nicely blaring the background to a certain extent. I will use something like 5,000 Kelvins here. So I want to, or maybe even 4,500 Kelvins. I might have to put a gel on this flash. Do 4,500 Kelvins, like take another shot. And now let's try it with a flash as a... So, hundredth of a second, 2.8, ISO 800. So at the moment I'm using ETTL wirelessly. And I, when I did a test shot with a normal ETTL, I think it's overexposed a bit. But again, this is a paper and it's reflecting. So at the moment I set the flash exposure compensation to minus one. The idea is that I don't want to have like a portrait in a studio without, you know, white background. It's something that I want to get this ambient lights. So this thing will, you know, fill in the light. Yeah. Can I always be the serious one? You can always be the funny one. <laughs> and, uh, nice! But to get somehow closer to each other, I might add a second light. From uh, from the other side. Come on, Ian. I know you can do it. This is this is not so bad. Oh, you see, like yeah. you are moving. Yeah. Change and, and look What's at Ian. There's nothing. Really it's like long exposure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was shooting last week uh, environmental portraits. I recorded an intro. I recorded some video footage while taking portrait pictures, but. I couldn't really video to such an extent as I wanted because for a simple reason, I didn't have time. I had to concentrate on the portraits. The camera was running, but I was not really able to speak about the, the strobes, the settings, etc., etc. So now I'm actually a few days later in the same place in, in the winery of uh, Vili in Ilmitz. And now we're going to do some more shots, but today is, it should be less hassle. So I thought now I have a few minutes, I will follow up <clears throat> and I will speak about the strobe and the, the wireless transmitter, the settings, etc. And uh, I mentioned last week also that I'm using the light, but mainly I want to use it as, I want to utilize as much as possible the ambient light. So this is just really, to fit as this light is really act as a fill-in light. So I want to get some nice color tones. I don't want to have faces in the shadows or hands or things in the kitchen or people drinking but I want to capture this ambience this sort of you see it's it's sort of yellowish tungsten light but this is the reality and I want to capture that and if I used more flat strobes more light I would heal it or I would have to use the gels to counteract uh, this color light I said I would be using before I said last week I would I have three of those the Canon 600 EX strobes and uh, I can't remember what's the name of it. It's just a Canon transmitter. They, they, they look very much the same, actually. If you look at the transmitter, it looks like a strobe itself. Uh, but I didn't really use three. I used one. There was no time to, to set up the lights. I, and I was, I, was, I was moving around the place in the kitchen, here in the uh, dining area. And I just used this... this uh, Luster light, tri flip work perfectly. Didn't really need additional lights. This light, uh, it's tungsten. So I'm going to, I'm going to change the white balance to 3,000. I'm going to change the white balance to 3,200 kelvins. It works more or less. I might have to tweak it later. We'll see. Uh, I will be around 2.8. Now let's take the reading, for instance, of this table here. And what does the meter tell me? Okay, I'm sorry, I'm at the AV, so I have to go back to manual mode. So let's start with F4, for instance. I saw, I'm going to change 3200. And I'm going to, let's say, hundreds of a second. Theoretically, 
when I look at the picture, I get the more or less the exposure. I mean, the meter told me it's, it's, it's well exposed, but it's actually underexposed because there is this, this white cloth which is fooling the, the, the meter. So let's open up to 2.8. And now the meter tells me I'm one stop overexposed, which is a normal situation for the white cloth. Now the histogram looks much better. I'm not sure if you can see me see it, but it looks much better. Colors are quite close to the real situation, so this is good. Let's get the flash. So I am more or less in a ballpark in terms of the light setup. As I said, this I want to use just as a fill fill light. I want to get the whole situation as ambient. But if I take a picture of myself, I would be dark in most of the situations, especially if I'm sitting here. So I want to use this. The flash will fire up and will bounce onto the, uh, onto the scene. I will be rearranging it up and down, depending what um, I'm going to do. But for instance, people sitting here, perfect. I'm going to use ETTL. I'm not going into manual modes which normally I would do in a studio, but here, as I will be positioning myself in different locations, every time I would have to change the settings. So, it says ETTL, I'm in a master mode, ETTL, master, all groups, which in this case I have just one, so I don't really care, channel one, and we should be good. I don't have at the moment any flash exposure compensation, I might be playing with that strobe. Let's just mount it here. So this, this bracket is quite useful. You can just position wherever you need the flash. So this tri-flip is in more or less 45 degrees, but again, I might be repositioning to my needs. So let's switch it on. I am at 35 millimeters, ETTLs, this is a slave. This light is red at the moment. As soon as I switch on the transmitter, they will go in they will go in green. We are ready to shoot. This one is in master mode and I'm using fully ETTL. Let's do some test shots. I might be uh, using the flash exposure compensation like minus one or plus one. I have to do some test shots. The key to get the ambient light, I mean sort of using the flash but also getting this this uh real light atmosphere is to use let's say slow, slower shutter speed the sync speed of the of the, most of the cameras is two hundredths of a second this camera is two fiftieths but if i set the if i set the camera to for instance two hundred fiftieths of a second and i lower down the iso to okay two hundred most probably i would get everything black it's there is nothing here the only thing I see in this picture is really the flash, the reflection. Everything else is pitch black. And the shutter was opened only during the duration of the flash. I mean, actually, the duration of the flash is much faster. It's just the maximum sync speed when the, uh, the sensor was opened fully. If I now go to hundreds of a second, that means it's already longer, I will get... The picture will be underexposed, but I start to see something on the wall, so I'm starting to get the ambience. Now, if I pump up ISO to, let's say, 1600, so this is, now I start to see the ambience. Actually, I see almost everything, but I want to get slower. I want to get... I want to get even more ambience, so I'm going to 3,200 3, ISO to really just to get everything as I, as I see with my normal eyes and this will just fill in those shadows here, etc. As you see now on the video, there is the whole dining area, or actually wine tasting area of the winery. And uh, I want to get this ambient I want to capture this ambience, uh, this, those lights. I don't want to use, of course I want to use the flash, but I want to use it just to fill in the, de the, the shadows to get some texture 
on on and and the good skin tones on people's faces, uh, but using a normal flash and especially straight on would really kill this atmosphere. So I want to drag the shutter. I want to use relatively slow shutter speeds, like like hundreds of a second or sixtieth of a second, to allow me to get as much light as possible after the flash. Because what happens is that when the, when the sensor is opened, when, when the frame is opened, the first curtain goes up. This is called first, uh, first curtain. And then the bottom one goes up. Sorry, yeah, the, the first one goes up, reveals the sensor, and then the second curtain starts to cover it, cover it and then the whole thing goes down, the whole mechanism. But this is what is the sync speed. I mean, every camera is either two hundredth of a second or this camera is two fiftieth of a second. But basically, this is the longest, sorry, yeah, the, sorry, not longest, the fastest time when the f sensor is fully opened. If you, set, if you use the flash and you set up the, flat, the shutter speed, especially if you're in manual mode, to let's say three hundredths of a second, what happens is that the first curtain goes up and then the bottom one starts to follow it. So during the flash duration, you start this one, the sensor is, let's put it the other way, the sensor is never fully opened. Because like if you're using the three hundredth of a second or six sixtieth of a second, it goes up, the sensor is fully opened, and then the bottom one goes up to close it. If you use anything which is over two fiftieth of a second or over two two hundredths of a second, this one goes up, and the bottom one starts to follow it. That's why sometimes, if if you had if your shutter speed was too fast, you might to see this this black stripe at the bottom of the picture. This is exactly the reason. But I want to use the slower shutter speed I, because if I use only the flash. And I, and I set it, for instance, to daylight by white balance or the flash white balance, which is five and a half thousand kelvins. Okay, the bottle or let's say the subject or the, the whoever would be sitting here, yeah, the, this, this face would look natural more or less, but everything here would be yellow. But if you start mixing it, so I set this, the camera to 3200 kelvins. And so I will get this nice color skin tones Sorry to say the skin tones on the bottle. I don't have uh, anybody here because I'm waiting for the people to come. But after the flash, so the flash fires, this, this, this lasts thousands of, one thousandth of a second. And then I still have this fraction of a second to get the ambient light. So that's why I want to, this is how you mix the, the, the flash. Doesn't matter, is it one, two, three, five, twenty of those with the ambient light. If I had 20 of those, I wouldn't go for this because I would set up all the lights all over the place and I would really build up my light. But I don't have, I have only three and I don't have time. Plus I will be using just one because I have to be mobile. I mean, with this one, whoever is sitting here or drinking, you just grab the whole thing, reposition, and it works. Let's do step by step. The flash, okay, this one is on, but the transmitter is off, so it will not fire. Let's go to F4. Let's start with ISO 100. And uh, 200 of a second, which is in most situations would be the sync speed of the camera. And let's take the picture. And what do we get if I get the focus on? And, um, yeah, this is from yesterday, the settings, I'm in uh, servo mode, let's quickly change it, I should have done it before, but yeah. And of course, as expected, it's pitch black, except, okay, you, I see some here, a light from the window, but in terms of, otherwise it's pitch black. Now, let's go on, so let's stay with those settings, F4 ISO 100. Uh, and let's switch on the flash. As I said, it's fully TTL, nothing changed, no flash exposure compensation. Now, the camera is set, the white balance is to 3200 kelvins. So, at the moment, this is only this light. 
so if I take this picture, it will be very blue, as expected, but at least I start to see something, and it's underexposed. So with those settings, either I would have to increase the flash power, or get it closer, just to get it closer, it's too far, let's just get a bit lower. I'm not going into this. Of course, if I use the flash, if I use the flash on the camera or simply just put it on the table, it would be stronger. But I want to have this nice diffused light bounced from this uh, triflip. But as expected, 3,200 kelvins. It's it's yeah. Uh, sorry, it's not yellow. It's blue. And uh, this. As expected, if I now change the white balance to five and a half thousand Kelvin, which is the color of this light, it will look more or less natural, but it is flat, and the whole basically the whole the back of the room of the cellar is gone. I mean, I don't. There's there's zero atmosphere. There's no ambience here. What I can do, even if I, in this case, even if I set the flash exposure compensation to plus two, I mean, to really go extreme, the back, nothing will change for the, to the background. A little bit, because this is a relatively huge surface, but the inverse square law for the light says that with every meter you lose double of light. So this is like, what, 10 meters? So basically nothing is there. But on the other hand, if this light is here so fast, I'm, I'm clipping here. Uh, I'm overexposed here on this cloth. So let's go back. We can just leave it with the plus one flash exposure compensation. And let's take another shot. But, okay. So technically it's okay, but this is not a good picture. Let's get, let's bring back some ambience. We are at ISO 100. We use this flash with a white balance set to five and a half thousand kelvins. And this is the result. The whole ambient light is gone, which you see now here on the video. And you see this nice uh, dining area in the winery. We want to capture that on the picture. So we have to, there are two things to do. If I had a tripod, basically what we have to do, we have to allow, allow the flash to fire and we have to have enough, the long enough shutter speeds to capture the light like if we wouldn't have the flash. So if I switch off the flash, the, tra the, the transmitter and I said I look at the meter now I'm really really underexposed okay with ISO 100 I have to go to uh, 0.4 of a second okay I don't have a tripod but I have uh, I have a table so I can do it Okay, now as you see, it's extremely yellow, because why? Because the, the white balance is set to daylight. So I want to switch it to 3200 Kelvins, which is roughly the tungsten light, those, which is now all the illuminations are those bulbs. And let's take another picture. And now it looks more natural, much better as you can see now on the screen. But now, okay, those are the bottles and we are on a tripod. Let's assume the table is a tripod. But when we start photographing people, you cannot photograph anybody uh, and ask him, especially while drinking wine, to, to stay still for a quarter of a second or half a second or so. So what we have to do, we have to increase uh, the shutter speed to something more realistic, 60th of a second, let's say, let's, let's try with 60th of a second, but to be on the same side, let's get a hundredth of a second, 
So with hundreds of a second, I saw, I saw 100. Wow, well, we are really underexposed as expected. So what we have to do, we have to raise the ISO. So I don't remember how many stops I changed the settings by how many stops. So what I'm here, I'm just looking through the viewfinder and um, increasing the ISO. Let's say 800. I'm looking at the meter. The camera tells me I'm two stops underexposed. Let's go to 1600. Now I'm one stop underexposed. Let's take the picture. It's okay. I'm starting to get the ambient light. But I think, as you see now, I think I want to do more. So either I will open up to 2.8 or I will increase the ISO. And this is what I will do. Let's say 2,500 Kelvin by so by two thirds of a stop. So I'm roughly one third of a stop underexposed comparing what the meter tells me, but I'm starting to see everything. Now, assuming those, okay, those are the glass bottles so that the light is getting through. I don't have any good example. Uh, I have to wait for people to come. But what would happen if I, don't, if I don't have any light here, which in this case, those bulbs are also giving some light. The face or the, the, the object here would be in a shadow. You don't see the nice colors on, on people's faces. That's why now I want to include the flash. And I don't want to have a front lit flash. I want to have a nice soft diffuse light here from this uh, tri-flip diffuser. So now I got my ambient settings more or less and let's do the same picture. So F4, hundreds of a second, Two and a half, sorry, two and a half thousand ISO, white balance 3200, which is more or less tungsten, a bit warmer than tungsten, because I, I, want, I want to mix it. And now let's get the, the flash. And let's take the same picture, basically. And what do we get? And now if you compare it, those two pictures, now it's much brighter from the front, but now I just realized that I was using flash exposure compensation plus one, which I don't want to do it now. So I'm now in ETTL with zero expo flash exposure compensation. Now this looks already much better. So I don't have here on this cloth, there is no so much highlights and looks more natural. Theoretically, to be 100% correct, to have to match the color of light, which is 3000 Kelvin, the ambience, I should put, or I, I might put it also later on, um, a color gel, like a warming filter. So this would cool down the color of light. So I hope you enjoyed it, this sort of real life tutorial while I'm waiting for the people to come. And uh, I actually have to start setting the light for the for the real shooting, uh, I might get a tripod from the car, and I might use uh, myself as a model. So I love those those kegs, those barrel of wines. I mean, they are empty at the moment, but I just love them here. So I might want to use them as a background background backdrop. And uh, yeah, so assuming I'm a model, and I want to do some environmental shots, corporate people, or like people here in the winery, the owners. And you want to get, this is their brand, this is their, this is what they are doing. And so they don't want to have a picture with an empty background when they are on a gray or white background. They want to show, yeah, this is mine. So we need this ambient light. And if you don't have time to set five lights here, like backlight, fill light, key light, etc. This is a way to go, really, and so portable. And now, uh, oh yeah, I might take some test shots now, even with myself, but I have to get a tripod to set this camera to, to take a picture of me, really. So assuming I'm standing here, and I want to have sort of one, two meters difference between the backdrops. I want to blare it a bit.
basically this goes up, bounces here. I might have to raise it a little bit more. If I remember, I said the minus one plus exposure compensation. Yeah, it is minus one. 2,000 of a second, so I was slightly underexposed the, the background. And now I need someone to take a picture of me. So, but for the time being, since I'm alone, let's do a selfie. And this is awesome. Yeah, perfect shot. Let's do another one. I mean, this is the idea of of 60 millimeter lens, I mean, it's quite useful, but yeah, I, I have to go to the car and get a tripod. Okay, now I'm underexposed because of course I'm looking here and the light is coming from this side. So what I would have to do, I would have to get this panel here. So let's do it from this side. So I'm actually looking now into the camera, which is filming and hello there. Perfect. So, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it will be useful. Till next time, this is Jezu. And now let me get some real shooting in the kitchen and people enjoying their night at Filiopis in Ilmitz in Burgenland. Till next time, this was Jezu from Bingwitz.